Who's next? Shall I go next? Yeah. You can go next. All right. Um, best album for me is probably a toss up between Black Star and Kadama. Yeah. Black, Black Star probably takes it, but I think Kadama has more songs on there that are consistently like songs I like. Whereas Black Star, it's really only sort of two or three songs that do it for me, I guess. But they really do it for me. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah, when it comes to talking about which, I probably would interject here and say that Lazarus is probably a second contender for best song of the year. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, when it comes to to worst albums, I don't really have one, but I have a worst a, a song that pisses me off more than anything. Maroon Five, Go Warrior, whatever the hell it was. Purely because they dragged Kendrick Lamar out to do a little rap bit at the end, like towards the end. Mm. And he should be above that by now. He does not need to do that kind of thing. He's he's well liked, everyone likes him. And Maroon 5 are consistently terrible. <laughs> like, I've never liked one of their songs and I'm never going to start. I, I think the only time I've liked a song by Maroon 5 is when, weirdly enough, they collaborated with another artist that I've almost wholesale never liked, and that's Rihanna. I didn't even like that one, I don't think. Eh. Um... I mean, admittedly, I say I liked it. That's more of a you struggle to say that you liked it because it's sort of like... not really, technically. Technically, no. God damn it! You got there before me. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, biggest disappointment. I, I don't honestly know, but I think it's probably just a case that like the well, the sheer amount of music deaths were the biggest disappointment because those people will never be bringing out albums again. You know, like. Um, but I do have a song of the year, if that helps. Mm. So, there's this manga recently turned into an anime called Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, you motherfucker. Yes, I'm going there. Um, it's very popular, very good. The ending theme for the, or the third ending theme, uh, opening theme mother, what am I talking about, for, um... Part 4 is particularly great because it's, well, let's all accept that for most of us, 2016 was a bit of a shitty year. Let's get that out of the way right now. For, especially for Americans, especially for people in this country who didn't vote leave, um, things were not great. This is a song that, and it has an English release, so it's called Great Days. Yeah! It's pretty great. It's by, by Karen, Alki, and Daisip, Daisuke Hasegawa. There is an English version of it. The f- general feel of the song, the lyrics, it all ties together to be the kind of uplifting feeling you need in a year like this. And I could not get it out of my head for like the entire last sort of quarter of the year that it was on. Mm-hmm. So, honestly, check it out, everyone. Check it out. Absolutely. There are literally dozens of you. Go on. Um, I'm sorry. No, yeah, that's me done, I think. Oh, well, then I guess that just leaves me, then. Mm. Yeah. Oh, right, well, where do I even begin? So, best... Uh, right, well, it's a bit difficult to, see, to say what my favourite album is, simply because the one I was most excited for last year, I haven't been able to get my hands on yet. That being Go Go Damper by Denver Gummy Inc. And... I've heard a bunch of songs from that. They all seem very, very promising to me. Uh, but since I haven't heard that yet, probably, like, the whole album, I'm going to have to say that my current, my favourite album for the year was one that immediately came out, like, right on the 27th of December. <laughs> um, I don't know whether that makes me some kind of uh, club or whatever, given that I've, I've only had a few, like, I've only had a couple of weeks to listen to it. But uh, my favourite album has to be... What, wait, what was, what was it called? Sorry, it's stupid moon rooms. I can't read. Um, ah, yes, Happiness a la Mode by, uh, Miko and Momobeko. It's, 
the thing is, I've had a whole bunch of sort of stuff, really quality albums come out, uh, but I've probably mentioned before, I'm a big Nana Hero fan, and uh, especially when she's doing collaborations with uh, Kama Camellia, who is a well-known sort of electronic artist, they make some very energetic, hyperactive stuff. Um, but, I mean, I'm saying this in a year when, you know, she has another album out, and, you know, I, I usually gush with adoration for her stuff, and... I gotta say, her latest one is very good, but it just so happens that this new album by Miko and Momo has totally superseded it, I think. Um, it's hard to say exactly what about it is different. Um, it's eight tracks long, and each one has a very different feeling. Some of, some of them feel uh, very sort of tidy, and like, the, the thing that my favorite track would have to be the, the third track, uh, Colorful Pop Candy which gives you an idea of exactly how sugary revolting this album is. Mm. Don't listen to this, guys, because my taste is... not You should take my words as opposite day. Um, well, other than the most literal sense of that, what I'm saying is an accurate description. Just assume that you will hate it. Um, it's what it I is... generally do. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, basically, um... the only time that I take any stock in what Richard says about music is when he's talking about Scar. Well, yeah, that's true. And I haven't been keeping on with Scar that much lately simply because uh, I don't really know who's good to listen to at the moment. I, the ones I followed haven't released anything in the last couple of years. But in any case, uh, yeah, no, um, the third track was really energetic, um, very sort of party-ish, um, whereas others feel very sort of disorganized and sort of messy in, well, in a quite deliberate sense in a way that you probably won't find outside of Dambo, given that being a horrible travesty is kind of what it's about. Um, yeah, that that's probably my album of the year. I'd say uh, check it out if you're a masochist or think you may also have shit taste. <laughs> uh, I definitely... Uh, I, I have had a lot of fun with that. It's... I think it's also just because it's two people who have had a long sort of histories of making lots of albums, but they've only done one together before now. And, you know, it's, it looks like this sort of relationship is going to bloom into something very exciting, at mm. least. Um, big disappointment, I don't really have one. I mean, other, you know, as I said, Nana Not Hero's album was less exciting to me this year, and I feel like uh, I kind of want them to sort of move on and maybe do a bit more different stuff, but they are doing that. It's just that, uh, I don't know, I think they're probably more tracks that Ed would enjoy, to be honest. And <laughs> I remember I played you one or two that you actually went, I don't hate this. And lo and behold, they're, le- <laughs> you know, they're the ones that, well, no, that's not entirely true. I, I, I do really enjoy them. I just don't enjoy them as much much as some of the other stuff that's been coming out. Um, but I can't really call it the biggest disappointment because, you know, I still loved every second. I think I'm generally a very positive person, probably too positive for my own good, or maybe I'm just less critical of music than I am of other things. Like, if a comic book's bad, I will dump on it hard. If mm. a movie's bad, I will dump on it hard. Music, maybe, maybe I'm just not. Or maybe it's just because I tune out before I even start if something just doesn't grab me immediately. <laughs> um Either way, that's probably a fault on my part, and, but, uh, you know, it's something I'm working on. Biggest surprise, on the other hand, uh, I guess I have something to comment on that I didn't actually mention earlier. Um, I guess the best thing to say would be that the Idol Master KR wasn't a horrible mistake yet. Um, I mean, I'm still very much on the edge of my seat because this could all very easily turn out to be wrong. Um, Technically, I guess is, you could say this is a TV complaint, but the thing is, since what we've got is music, I feel like this fits adequately here. Because the thing is with Idol Master, it's, it's, an, it's an idol thing, but it's a fake idol thing. It's voice actors doing idol things, being cute 2D versions of people. The thing is, I feel like the music a lot of the time goes quite nicely with it, and the, the songs generally have a very sort of warm, kind of cozy feeling. I've said this over and over again. And me living in my cozy, san- uh, you know, sanitized 2D bubble, I don't like the idea of 3D people coming co-opting my, my uh, cartoons. And lo and behold, that's what Bandai Namco decided to do this year. They, they decided to license out the Idol Master brand to make a live-action TV show in Korea, of all things. Hence, uh, Idol Master KR. And I was deeply worried because I really like the Idol Master's music, most of it. Um, and I, it, it varies quite a bit, but it always a lot of it rolls around back to a very comfy feeling. I don't really know how to describe it beyond that. Um, all the ones where it's like all the characters singing together generally seem, seem to... You know that kind of feeling you get after you, you've had a hot cup of mulled wine, mulled wine in winter. It's just like, ah, oh, cozy feels in front of the fireplace or whatever. I don't know. That is a, a dumb 
analogy and I'm losing my way. But, um... Don't lose your way. Indeed, I, I've lost my... Yeah, I need one of you would do it. Thank you. Um, but, so, yeah, they... I do not like most K-pop. I can't. I, I just can't abide it. Um, he hates it. He hates it, yes. I, I For whatever reason, I just... K-pop seems to be more... I have a fair bit more Western influence a lot of the time. <laughs> Don't quote me on that because evidently it's not something that I am extremely knowledgeable about. I just know that every time I've dipped into it, I have not really got along with it. There's, um, this is the reason why we've got we're going to have a guest co-host when we get around to reviewing a K-pop album because I know bugger all except that I generally seem to prefer K-pop to J-pop, so go figure. Yeah, well, I, I'm perhaps it's... It's you, the one that likes your idols to be slutty. Part of the problem... <laughs> well, you're not wrong, and that's also a reason to be worried, but... Um, I, I can't, but... Uh, the thing is... Uh, so I was really worried because I like 2D things. I do not like 3D things being introduced to 2D things. Um, so they did all these auditions and they did a couple of music videos. And I was, you know, I, I remember the day they got uploaded to YouTube and I clicked it and I was thinking, oh no, what have I let myself in for? And I listened to it and I thought, you know what? I, I listened to I, one of the tracks I didn't like. Uh, which was one for all. Like it again if I listen to it again. But uh, I tried clicking on the other one, Dream, and I watched it, kind of listened to it, and uh, kind of just sort of shared, just thinking, oh man, you know, I, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. It isn't. It isn't terrible. It doesn't sound completely unlike everything else that the Idol Master has done. I mean, obviously there were some K-pop flourishes, uh, some of which I was okay with, some of which I didn't like. I do. Again, this is maybe this is just me and random luck, but I always know. I, I notice in K-pop songs there seems to be this bit, like you know, one single will go up and sort of in the middle of the song they'll go, ah, ah, you know, sort of, sort of like like some very tuneful Tarzan doing some big drum, holding some long dramatic note and sort of posing dramatically. And there was one bit which did that but you know on the whole a lot of the aspects of the source material i guess you could call it remained intact and i enjoyed it part of the dance choreography was nice and uh yeah yeah i thought it was generally at the very least possible for now um and yeah i'm still mad that this is go it's going to be streamed worldwide on amazon video when the rest of the item master is almost completely unlicensed overseas which feels like i'm being insulted but, you know, I'll tell you what I'm getting yet. I'm going to watch it when it comes out. And uh, maybe it won't be shit. I, you know that this has to be a big deal. When it's making as zealous a 2D idol maniac as me, I actually stop my trash and actually consider watching. Uh, so that was my biggest surprise. Uh, biggest is a point. Wait, no, I've already said it. And I didn't have a worse album. So, yeah, I have new, new, no nuance whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, overall, a lovely year. I have no problems, <laughs> and I have no. I have about as many problems as I have taste. No, no problems, but taste ain't one. Yeah, we taste all of them. Incidentally, I've only I've managed to just acquire. Um, I've got the Dembogumi album coming now, so I'm gonna I'm gonna probably be able to comment that on that next year or uh, whenever I next come on. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I just need to have a show me a PS talk shit about dumb J-pop. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, that's all I really have to say. 